Now, I'm first going to make a step back huh, because AI is not replacing fossil fuels, is not replacing fossil materials, is not AI as such is not providing a better healthcare. Uh, it's, a, it's an enabler. Welcome to another Makers and Shapers uh, conversation at EIT Digital. So the Makers and Shapers conversations are all about the future. We are talking to the entrepreneurs, the corporate leaders that we call the makers, and we talk to the governments, to the policy makers, to the European Commission, the shapers. And today I have the distinct pleasure of welcoming Michiel Schaeffer, that has been recently appointed as the chairman of the EIC, the European Innovation Council, an important instrument to support uh, entrepreneurs in Europe. Michiel, first of all, welcome to, to our uh, Makers and Shapers uh, interview, and maybe Tell us about, a bit more about yourself and your new role at EIC. You, you described different roles I had. Uh, fundamentally, I'm, I'm born in an industrialist family. So my, my father was a CEO, my both grandfathers were CEOs. So I'm, I'm in an environment where it's, I was used to run in a factory when I was a kid, uh, either of my grandfathers or my father. So that's fundamentally what, what I am. But also in a, in a family where there was a lot of curiosity of, of deepening uh, the way my, uh, entrepreneurship was, was carried out. So I, I did my PhD on, on technology and, and regional change. Then I worked for an industry association. So I was, let's say, really on the ground talking with makers on how to improve their business and how to bring in technology into their business. And that led me to, to become a, a grant writer. So that was my second role. And in that grant writing role, we also created our own company. So we, we spun off uh, companies sometimes with success, more often as a failure. So I've learned the hard part of, of, of scaling up. And that experience of, of grant writing and, 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 and fostering startups led me to some anger and to say, well, we have to change the way governance works. And then I applied for the regional government in, in, and with the ambition of setting up revolving funds. So using a part of the capital of the province to invest in startups and scale-ups. And that was a fundamental experience that qualified me, I think, for applying for the, the role of president of the board of the European Innovation Council, uh, especially since as a regional governor, uh, regional vice governor, uh, I was also a member of the Committee of the Region, so also, let's say, into the European system. Um, so that those combinations led to what I do now. Okay, let's maybe now, you, you mentioned uh, two uh, keywords that I like a lot, investments and ecosystems, on, on top of course of startups and scale-ups. So, why do you think in Europe it is so important to focus on deep tech when it comes to investment in startups and scale-ups? Well, the importance of deep tech is, is motivated by its contribution to the big societal challenges. Uh, the, the Green Deal, to the transition to an, a carbon-free a uh, fossil-free uh, energy and material provision requires a lot of deep tech to develop new, new engines, new batteries, uh, new materials. Uh, the same thing is that in, a, in improving health care systems, we have to go to f more fundamental genomical knowledge, but also m pharmaceutical, so hence chemical knowledge. So that's the second uh, side. And the third one is that in boosting the efficiency of computers, we also have to go to other systems of designing information systems. I think of quantum technologies, but also the interaction between hardware and software has become more, more important again. And so the, the law of more has been based on speeding up the, the hardware and the software would follow. And now basically the interaction is more important in improving that. So there are a number of big challenges that we, wherefore we need deep tech. Uh, and we need, need those technologies in combination with each other, so to cross over them. What are the strengths, in your opinion, of the European deep tech? What I see as the strength of the deep tech is the crossover. And so in, in the portfolio we have as EICs, uh, so in the accelerator, you always see the combination of an enabling technology, that can be AI, to a problem. And so how to solve a medical problem or energy use by having better systems. So it's always the combination that makes it strong, uh, and also a motivation that also Ursula von Leyen mentioned in, in the State of the Union speech of addressing a societal challenge. So the difference between uh, Europe and China is the focus on societal issues and not on, let's say, the economy per se, and with US on 
again, addressing societal challenges and not the financial revenue per se. Let's now talk about AI because now everyone is talking about AI and it's probably the, one of the technologies that is going to change completely society and economy in the future. Um, we see that um, in the US there's a lot of investment into generative AI, uh, also from the private sector. Uh, Elon Musk, uh, for example, invested a lot of money and uh, Microsoft uh, and, and Google. Um, it seems to me that Europe uh, struggles when it comes to matching those investments. At the same time, we have a tremendous potential here. So what is your view on this? And do you agree that Europe needs to step up in order to, to match what other parts of the world are, are doing? Yeah, I'm first going to make a step back eh, because AI is not replacing fossil fuels, is not replacing fossil materials, is not, AI as such is not providing uh, better healthcare. Uh, it's, it's an enabler. That's a, and it's an enabler in two things. It's an enabler in uh, increasing the effectiveness of processes, so better understanding what is needed to solve the problem. Uh, and it's a process to, to increase the efficiency, so basically speeding up the processing of data and having faster, faster solutions. Uh, and in the same time, uh, it, it seems to be that AI loses a lot of electricity, so it's, not, it's, a, it's a high consumer of, of energy. So I th see it as a, as not as a key technology, but as a, as a key enabler. So something that supports a whole range of other processes and that we need to improve the efficiency because since we're going to keep certain processes, it is better to have them efficient instead of having them not efficient. So AI is for me an enabler, um, and it's an enabler in terms of, of replacing, um, re replacing and complementing a human intelligence. And so basically helping to find quicker solutions in, in a large buzz of data and helping to improve systems what, because AI has a kind of self-learning system in it. So I see, I see it as, a, as an interesting but complementary technology to others. I like what you said about AI being an enabler and it, it enables really uh, tremendous advancement in some sectors like healthcare, for example. Uh, let's now go back uh, for a second to, to, to the deep tech element. So we said now that AI is an important uh, enabler. We, we said that deep tech is important to address European societal challenges. From a perspective of an investor, like the EIC is, a, is an investor, uh, what, what makes it different to invest in deep tech rather than a traditional investment in technology? Well, I think the, the easiest one definition I have for deep tech is that in deep tech you have a, a deep valley of death. And so you have a valley of death that is long. So it takes three, four, five, six years of, of fundamental development, of technological development, before you have a pilot that you can show. Um, so what the EIC does is provide the capital to survive those, those deep valleys. Um, and that's the difference with, let's say, the normal startup that normally let, will have a turnover within six months or a year. The best example is in, uh, in clinical testing, uh, where you need, uh, where you have three, four years of, of testing whether a product works in the, in the body. And when there's an interaction with AI, that is also in, uh, the case. Um, so that's what where and, and in that, that deep tech where you have a long let's say development stage and a deep valley, uh, their private capital is scarce and their EIC has an added value. Yeah, indeed, that, that's what I also feel that it, that's why it is so important to have bodies like the EIT and the EIC to to jointly invest using also the public uh, support uh, to help entrepreneurs deep tech uh, going yeah. through the a longer uh, valley of that. Yeah, where well, the complementarity is that, that uh, the ITs are for, are for the ESC an important seedbed. So the companies are identified there, they get smaller grants, and basically, the, let's say, they, they are in the, in, the, in the beginning of the valley of death. And, um, and to select, then the role of selection is very important there. And in the, in the deep valley is, well, it's, I, I have never been in that valley of death myself. Um, but if, if I speak to people, it's sometimes discouraging. I mean, it's also a stage where a lot of things go, go wrong, where you have to, re to review your, your, your plan and to keep, let's say, psycholog psychological support is very important in the, in the depth of the valley. Uh, and their EITs also play a role of, uh, well, keeping in touch, uh, cr keep having communities where they can encounter themselves. And then you have the connection. Once you get out of it, you have to create a connection with, with the big corporates. And that's also where the EITs can play an important role. I, I was saying before, uh, now that uh, when I look at the US, I see that the private sector is also playing a big role. And I see 
a bit uh, less of that in Europe. So what do you think the EIC or other instruments can do in order to push the private sector to become a bit more bold and also co-invest in deep tech and make sure that we really have a joint effort of the makers and the shapers mm -hmm. for the, for the uh, good of Europe and our entrepreneurs? Yeah, well, the main instrument of the EIC, the accelerator, is designed as a grant and an equity part. And the equity part is always conditional that startup brings or is helped to bring its own investors. So in the accelerator fund part or the EIC fund part, we have on average a, a leverage of 3, 3.2. So that means for every euro of public money invested in that company, three euros come from other sources. Uh, sometimes also national promotional banks or regional promotional banks, but also they, they are not a lead investor, so there's always a private lead investor. So basically our work is to seduce the private investors to go earlier in the TRL. And the selection process, which is very thorough compared to most VCs that the EIC does, would help them to secure, to secure that, okay, the, pro the process has been well done, so the risk is lower if I invest in those. And in general, what we know now, not from the SC, but from the national promotional banks and the regional ones, is that on average, the num amount of failures in, in that portfolio is much lower than in, in private VCs. And by the way, the level of failure in European VCs is also far lower than in the US. So in the US, there's more money, there's more risk, but there's also more failure. More failure. And so it could be that the efficiency of the, the VC system in Europe and in the US is, uh, is, is, is a closer gap than the absolute funding difference. The, the big problem in Europe is that overall pension funds, which are, well, that, that are big in Europe, and private capital is, is so far conservative that they tend to prefer real estate than industrial investments. Um, so, so, and that's a pity because industrial investments are the, the jobs of the future and, and re needed to pay the fund pensions, whereas uh, real estate also creates an inflation of value of, of real estate. So it's, not, it's not, a ver not a very sustainable investment long term, although it seems to be. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, industrial investments are better. Indeed. Maybe it also requires a change of mindset and uh, of course it takes time, but uh, the work you are doing is great in, in that direction. Another important element when it comes to European deep tech and entrepreneurship is about skills. So we see the more uh, we, we go out and we talk to our entrepreneurs and to the corporates, we see that there is also a co always a concern about uh, the availability of talents in Europe, but also elsewhere in the world. That's, that's a pretty common issue. So what's your take on that? Uh, are, we, are we doing enough on uh, digital skills? No, we're not doing enough. Uh, far from it. Um, and it's not digital skills only, it's basically all the STEM, all the science, technology, engineering and mathematic uh, training. So uh, in mo almost all European countries, um, the effort is too small and the number of young people going into those, those uh, studies is too small at all levels, whether it's uh, level three, four, up to let's say the academic levels five, six, seven. So it's at, at all levels it's, it's too little. Um, it's not easy to do. I, my, in my previous function, I was chairman of the Vocational Training Fund in the Netherlands, and it's not easy to get young people into, into technical professions. So that's one thing. So that's basically the, uh, here, the ICT skills. But what is also important in AI uh, is, let's say, the other skills. I mean, you need people with a medical mindset to be able to understand uh, the data and the processes that, that are digitally programmed and that provides results. So you need also, let's say, a content reading. Uh, and what is also important is, is to have a, let's say, a, a moral or philosophical or social appraisal of what are the human consequences or what are the consequences for humans of having certain uh, ICT AI technologies. So it's also important to put, let's say, the, 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 the philosophical aspect at the, at the beginning because a lot of the AI models are based on uh, frequency and correlations. Uh, but correlation is not the same thing as causality, and frequency is not necessarily meaningful. So you need also people who are able to, to understand the deeper correlations and causalities uh, in order to de design the systems. And that often requires to look at, sm at small signals and to, to discard, let's say, the, the, the large signals. So that's also a knowledge that has to be developed. And the problem there is that you need people with a, 
um, an alpha, an alpha or a gamma background, so a humanities or, or, or a social sciences background, but that can also understand ICT. That's not, that's not easy. So and there's a discussion also within Europe on is it brain drain, so leaving always, always gone, or brain circulation, people go and come back with enhanced skills. I think that brain circulation is a very good thing. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I did it, my wife did it, my brothers did it. We all spent some time abroad, but we all came back because uh, you're an alien in America. Mm. If you're Dutch or, or, or English or Italian, uh, you're an alien. You pay more tax, you have less rights. Um, so let's say that, that being in a continent where you have civil rights is a, is, a, is a significant advantage of being in the US. So we have reasons to get people back here. Um, so if it's in a circulation model, there's no, there's no problem with it. Um, but still, we have to work at improving conditions of people wanting to come back. And that's not only the European way of life, but also, especially people who have gone to the US, the appetite to take risks, uh, to be rewarded for doing so, to have a structure of funding, for example, that, that funds people who want to take risks. So that's where the IC also, also plays an important role. And that's what I see as well. I mean, a lot of beneficiaries or applicants have also spent some time in the US. Um, so we have to work at creating the instruments that people either want to stay or want to come back. Yeah, I fully agree on the circulation, actually. I think it's an important element to allow people to go abroad, make different mm -hmm. experiences and come back uh, with an added value. And I cannot agree more on the importance of human rights and civil rights that we have in Europe. I think we are getting stronger on technology, on entrepreneurship, but we always do that with the, with the values in mind. And I think there is where Europe can play a big role. And it's also very refreshing to see that there are a lot of initiatives in Europe that are addressing the challenges. I think we mentioned several challenges uh, this morning, but also we also look at a bright future because there are many initiatives and, and people like you that are driving for, for this initiative at, at European level. So this was, uh, I think, the end of the interview. I would like to thank uh, Michiel once again for uh, your availability and congratulate on, on the great uh, work you are doing at the, at the EIC. And uh, of course, I'm looking forward to an intensified collaboration between our respective organizations. Thank you so much. Thank you.